Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. And set up. I'm not going to pull this out too much, but everybody is going to get a speak easy, which will be put up. And when you have it, this side right here will be in front of you, and then you have your storefront looking out at the other players. Then you will grab the, the color meeple that matches it, and you'll be ready to go. The player will also receive $20, and then they will also receive four liquor bottles to place out front here which if you want to pop these out, they would fit right in here and they would go out front in your storeroom. Then you're gonna have this tracker that will be going on and you would place the policeman during on round one. So each round, the police car will move up just signifying the rounds and what's going to be going on during the game. Once you have all this set up, you are ready to play. Now, each character is gonna have a different role in the game. This guy's gonna shuffle and deal the client cards to each player. He'll be able to do that. You can also call in a favor, take one client card from the deck. This player's job is to fill the truck with bottles each round, and he can call in a favor and take one bottle from the back. So everybody's going to have a unique power and a duty to do during the game, so you don't get bored and one person isn't just kind of running everything. The first thing you're going to do each round is you're going to fill the truck up. That means you're going to take four bottles from the bag, randomly, per player, and set them out here. So here it's four. That would be one player. And then we'll fill this up with 12 for a three-player game. And the whole thing will be filled for a five and this row for a four-player game. So there you go, the truck is full. In the first round, each player will be dealt three cards, four cards in the second round and five cards in the third round. Each player will look at their cards and choose one to keep. If you wanna keep a card, and then very easily, you would just set the card and you set it up on there and then the rest of them will go to the side. Then you would receive two cards from your person Keep one of these cards, sending the other card over. Then you receive one card from the person over here. And now you would have three cards that would be your hand after drafting them. The third, the third thing we're going to do in a round is we're going to auction off the truck. Everybody who put money in their hand, reveal how much money they have. The highest bid wins. So if you win, you pay your money to the supply and you get to take all of the bottles in the truck. If you lose, you take that money back into your hand and you don't lose anything. Once again, you will be winning all of the bottles in the truck. So this is the front of your store that will be shown to everybody else. So if you are the one that won the truck, then you will put all of your bottles that you just won out front of your store where everybody can see what you have. So at this point, everybody can see what is available from your store and the truck would be empty because you just purchased them all. Now in the fourth phase, everybody can trade. Now why would I trade this? I would score a whole bunch of points for this, right? No, I gotta have less than 10 by the time the round ends. So it gives me a, a reason to get rid of this stuff. Otherwise, I would just fulfill these cards and serve all my clients and nobody else would get anything. But I don't want more than 10. I'm gonna get to why in a way, but at this point, people can start to trade things. So you can trade cards, you can trade money, you can trade liquor, whatever you want to trade, anybody at the table can trade during the trading phase and gain the resources that you want. So this is an open trading phase of anyone at the table can trade, but there are incentives to trade as you're moving forward. Once you're done trading, you don't want to trade anymore, your, your little meeple will be out in the front. Then what you'll do is you take your meeple out from out front and you'll put him on the back of this signifying you're no longer willing to trade. So now this green person is no longer to trade. If he's out here, he's open to trades. Once he plays here, he's saying, I'm done trading and I'm not gonna trade any longer. At this point, once trading is done, Capone is gonna come by. He's gonna make sure nobody has more than 10. If you have more than 10, he is going to wipe everything out that you have. So I must, if there's more than 10 as they're in here, I would discard all of my liquor. So now there's an incentive during a trading phase for me to get rid of this stuff because I don't want to be stuck with it. Then I take the Capone uh, coin and I will flip it depending on what side comes up. The bottle side comes up. Everyone else must discard their choice, half of their bottles into the hole of the truck. So these would go into the truck here and be disposed of at least half of them. Now, if I were to roll flip and the money side come up, then they must forfeit, forfeit half of their money rounded down to the bank. So if you had money, then you would have to 
give it up to the bank, half of it, round it down, and get rid of it. So there's an incentive for the other players to take this liquor off my hands if I won the uh, the truck this turn and because they don't want to lose half their stuff, right? And I also want to trade it because I don't want to lose all of my stuff. So there's a good incentive to do both, and that's what's going to drive a lot of the trading. Then the last section we're going to serve our patrons. So these cards that you drafted at the beginning will have desires on them. This person wants a beer, a vodka, and a rum, and it's worth a number of victory points if I'm able to serve them. And this will kind of direct what you're trying to get. This guy wants some rum. This guy wants beer and rum versus a number of victory points. So you want to not only trade, you, you might have a great quantity of something. Maybe I have a lot of beer for, from circumstances, but all my person wants to do is drink rum. So I might want to trade my beer for somebody's rum and then we're a match made in heaven if they want beer and not rum. So that's kind of what will be happening during the game as you try to fulfill the wants of your uh, clientele that's coming through the front door. Now at the end of the game what you're trying to do is set collect these. So the bootlegger if I get four of them I get 10 extra victory points. Do you see that there? So that will be why I will try to collect other bootleggers because the more I get the more victory points. So I need exactly four in order to get 10 victory points. Three doesn't do me any good. You'll see here for the Crooked Cop, I need five of them, and so I need to serve five of them to get to 13 victory points. So do a little bit of set collection in there also. So that might be why you draft somebody versus somebody else. At the end of the game here in the tracker, you also see a police raid. So that means if you have any bottles of beer that you haven't used to serve people that are sitting out here, the police are going to come raid them. It's going to cost you $1 for every... Uh, bottle of alcohol that you have out here. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If this is all there at the end of the game and I didn't use it to serve anybody, then I'm going to lose money for having this. So it's not just hoarding liquor. You want to have strategically get the liquor that you need to serve your clients because anything left over is negative. Then at the end of the game, you count up how much money you have. Whoever has the most money is the winner of the game.